Four days ago, I made a post that kind of got a lot of views. And one of the things that was really apparent in this post is that a lot of people struggle with the understanding of Riverpod and wish that there were tutorial materials out there to understand Riverpod. So that's the goal of this video is I'm going to as quick as possible give you a rundown in this little starter application of how to use Riverpod as fast as possible. I'm going to try and get that done as within 10 minutes. So why is there confusion to begin with? Well, if you go to the Riverpod documentation, one of the things you'll notice is there's a lot of confusing terminology. It presumes that you understand a lot of prerequisite information. For example, it talks about state notifiers, change notifiers. It assumes you know what a notifier even means. And if you, talk, if you look through the documentation, it refers to such concepts with the th assumption that you already know what that means. And it just creates this air of confusion of what the hell is going on. It doesn't treat you like a, an actual new person to the language. So if you just forget everything that's going on in here, just don't get disorientated and just start with the getting started page. Get it installed and then go down here, get this installed. And then you're going to get need to get this ready, okay? This dart run build one up build runner watch command. Okay. So once you've installed it, follow this document, get it installed. Now you're ready to use Riverpod. So over here in my start project, I need to do what I just copied into my clipboard. I need to click new terminal and I need to paste that in there and have, oops, I copied the wrong thing. Uh, dart run build runner watch is what you want to run. So I'm going to just lower that down and get rid of that. Now, you'll notice this is the standard template that comes with Flutter when you run the command to start a new Flutter uh, project. One of the things you'll notice that I've done is I've separated out into its own page, the homepage widget. And the reason I've separated it out is just to make it really clear to understand that this is a completely separate widget and we're trying to address a specific problem with Riverpod. Another thing you'll notice is I've added two themes instead of the one that comes with it a dark theme and a light theme. And in, in order to switch between them, you have to go down here and change this variable and it will switch it between light and dark. Another thing you'll notice I've done is I've added a toggle up here. The goal is that whenever you click that, we want it to update this. Now the stand way you would do this, which is applicable to every state management solution out there, not just Riverpod, is you would do what's called lift the state up. So you would inside of here provide a argument you can pass in, which is basically a function. So you would pass into here some kind of function, which you would define here and have the state defined here locally in the parent so that you can have the parent responsible for holding the state. And then the trigger down here would call that argument that was passed in. That's called lifting the state up. Forget that, you would of course use Riverpod in this scenario. So what you would do is you would create a new file and you would call this something relevant. So let's call it uh, is, uh, sorry, uh, theme uh, provider dot dot. And then in here, the first thing you do every time you write some Riverpod is you have to write this part thing. Basically, it's going to generate some code in the background, which this is going to make it do. So you want to always name the part the same as the file that you're working in. So theme provider dot G dot dot is what you would do. And then you're ready to write some Riverpod in this file. Now, every time you write Riverpod, you've basically got two choices. OK, so if you go here, you've got two choices. You can either make a simple request to do a read operation from the state. Okay, so you could follow this document here for the in the essentials, or the other option is you can perform a uh, create a river pod that has side effects. So basically, between the two options, this is only if you want to read the state, and this is if you also want to update the state. Those are your only two options. Now, in this scenario, we do want to perform a side effect. We want to also toggle it. We don't just want to read it. We want to toggle it, which means we want to do a side effect. So the difference being is every time you perform a side effect you instead of write one syntax, you write a different syntax. And this is the syntax you use for whenever you perform a side effect. So we'll just copy that, dump it in here. We will name this to what we want. So what are we trying to do actually in the app is we want it to return a Boolean. So we'll call it is, is light theme as the class name, okay? And then we'll put that there. 
And then instead of returning result from the build method, we're going to return the initial state of this provider. So the initial state is going to be a Boolean and then we're good to go. So the build method is the initial state, which is going to return true. So it will start as a light theme and it's that simple. So now we're ready to import everything that's missing. We've got annotation to import. And actually let's bring up the terminal. And if I click save, you'll see it starts doing things. And that is because we're running that build runner in the background. It's generating code down here into the .g file. So everything is successful, looks good, okay? Let's plug this in. Notice we haven't built our side effect yet. We'll talk about the side effect in a sec. Right now, we've just got a provider that returns an initial state of true. So we go back, where do we want to use that? In both of these pages, in the root component, we want to read it, which is here. Every time you want to have a widget, which is able to use Riverpod, you have to use the right type of widget. So we're using a stateless widget. So whenever I see this, I do control space to generate some code. I start writing the word for stateless and I can see I can generate a stateless consumer, okay? So this is the type of template we want to use for Riverpod. So we want to replace stateless widget with consumer widgets. What I'll do is copy that, paste that there, copy this build method, which has changed and paste that build method into there. Okay, I've got the generator code, copied and pasted. I'm ready to use Riverpod. Down here, I can just go here at the theme mode and I can do, actually we'll do it up here. We'll just do is theme, is light theme as a question, as a Boolean. And we'll do ref.watch. Now there is some important nuance to when you use ref.watch versus the other options. That's definitely something you want to refer to the documentation for. But for now, we're just trying to get you moving. Just remember every time you're in the build method, you have to use ref.watch is light theme provider is what we generated when we made that file over there. So now we have over here, if I hover, you can see we've got a Boolean and we're going to go down here to the theme mode. We're going to do is light theme question mark. Yes. Then we're going to use light mode. Otherwise we're going to use dark mode. Cool. We're reading it here. And in the home page, we also want to read it and we want to read it uh, when we're providing the value of the toggle here. So we're going to go ref dot watch. Oh yeah, of course it's got an issue with the ref because this is a flutter widget and we want a river pod widget. So we're going to go and type state full consumer. And then we're going to start copying the replacement boilerplate consumer state full widget import river pod. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Done. Wait, what, what changed there? Uh, create state's got an issue because that we also have to change consumer state. Done. Okay. Oh, we have to change it here as well. Okay, done. Now we can delete the toggle that, so we used to manage the state local. So we locally, so we can delete the toggle there and here we can delete that as well. Here we, where were we before ref dot watch. Okay. So we can read the, the value and then now we're reading the value. You'll notice that we're now reading the value and I can't toggle it because the on change isn't connected to my state. So how do you toggle it? Well, we want to perform a side effect. So we go into here and we write toggle as a function. Just for clarity's sake, we're always going to return void from a side effect because the state is managed within this class. And if you write the word state, it automatically will update all the listeners of this provider. Okay. So if you change the state, it will automatically update all of the listeners. So this is how simple it is to toggle it and change the state with a side effect. So now we go down to here, instead of watch, we're doing a read. And then we're going to write is light theme provider dot notifier dot toggle. Now I know, right? You don't need to understand what a notifier is. Just know that every time you're doing a side effect, you need to read the notifier and trigger it. That's all you need to know. And then you're good to go. So now if I toggle it, finally, we're using Riverpod to manage the state. Fantastic. If you want to see more from me and more tutorials, please let me know. 
in this form, I ask for your email address. And then if you're actually willing to pay for some tutorial videos, then I'll go through the effort of making a bunch more tutorial videos on more use cases, more common use cases 